quasi here. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about how you can control your mind, but in particular, the biggest reason why you fail to control your mind and you fall into the mind's traps and you fall into all of your impulses and your compulsions and why you fail to become successful. I honestly believe this is the one thing that every single successful person has learned how to do, but they probably can't speak about it because they haven't thought about it, that it's become second nature to them. So I really want you to stick around to the very end of this video because I honestly do believe this will be a very big game changer for you. Before we get started with this video, I want to quickly announce that I made a brand new bootcamp for you. So if you scroll down to the pinned comments below, you'll be able to get access to a link take you to a page where you put in your name and your email address and you get access to an exclusive email list as well where I can share stuff that I can't really share on the YouTube channel. So without further delay, let's go right ahead and get started. Today, I want to talk to you about controlling, controlling your mind and I've made a ton of different videos about this. But what I haven't been able to bring into those videos was the real reason why people fail to control their minds. And we're going to explore the three different levels of mind in order to really hammer this point home. And then by the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a simple exercise that you can begin using to learn and train this skill of controlling the mind, okay? So to understand this topic in uh, depth, we have to understand why people fail to control their minds. The biggest reason people fail to control their minds is they become too identified with thought and they become, you know, they, they just move in with whatever wherever direction their minds take. So what we try to do and what you shouldn't do is try to control your mind, okay? I know the title of this video is controlling your mind, but don't try to control your mind. Why? So you should never try to control your mind because the mind works in multiplication and division. So anytime we have some sort of content within the mind and we have a focal point of this content, it doesn't matter what the context behind the content is, and I'm gonna explain that. What that essentially means is I can think about something and I can say that I don't want this, I don't want to pay bills, versus I want to make money, right? So if you focus on I want to make money, you will make money. If you focus on I don't want to lose money, you will lose money. So it doesn't care about the nature of your thought the nature of your focus. Whatever you focus on moving towards or moving away from, if you're averse to something, the mind takes that as move towards it. And your whole being, the whole subconscious being aligns your whole being to move forward towards that, okay? So I learned this lesson when I was actually playing golf. And I was thinking about avoiding a shot in golf. You know, I was like, all right, don't, don't hit this. And whenever you have obstacles on the golf course, like a water hazard or something, I think about, okay, don't put it in the water. And every time I think about that, guess what happens? The ball goes in the water. I hit that bad shot. So it doesn't matter in the mind, you know, whatever you think about. The content is what's key. If I focus on avoiding something, I'm going to move forward towards that, okay? Another example I can give you to exemplify this is when you're on the highway and you look at the car next to you. Okay, have you ever been on the highway, you look at the car next to you, you're like, I want to avoid that car. The more you keep focusing on avoiding the car, the more you move forward towards that car, right? So it doesn't matter if you focus on avoiding or moving towards something. All, all that matters is what is the content of your focus? So this is a phenomenon called target fixation. We get target fixation whenever we focus on something. So I want you to remember that. When you try to control your mind, it literally means you're resisting something in favor of something else. Whatever you feel more intense in resisting, you will move towards that. For example, going back to that golf example, if I want to prevent the bad shot more than I want the good shot, I will hit the bad shot. Most people want to avoid failing more than they want to succeed. Okay, in every single endeavor that you've tried, please think about this. The reason why most people don't become successful in business is because they get started off with the resistance of, I want to get away from my nine to five. I, I don't want to stay stuck here more than they want to move forward towards that freedom. More time every single day is spent thinking about what they want to get away from and complaining about their current situation 
than they do about what it is they actually want. And because this is more intense, we move towards it. Okay? So this is how this interesting uh, phenomenon of target fixation works. So now you might be asking, okay, if that method of avoiding and focusing doesn't work, what actually does work? And this is what brings me to these three levels. So I want you to consider uh, this simple example. Have you ever been in a room where the TV was on? There was no volume on the TV, but the TV was on and you were reading a book. Okay, you're reading a book, but in the corner of your vision, in your peripheral, you can see a TV and moving images in the TV. And no matter how much you try to focus on your book, you just keep getting distracted by the TV, right? You can't focus on the book when there's something moving around you. This goes to show that we're so in our sense perceptions, whenever there's an interruption, a movement in our field of vision, in any of our senses, if, if there's some sort of a disturbance, we get distracted by it. We start to move towards the TV. The TV is more engaging than the book, the solid page book that doesn't move. And this is so interesting because the same thing occurs with our minds. We can't still our mind because there's always moving thoughts in there. Have you ever noticed that? There's always some thought that comes up and we get distracted by these thoughts. Okay. Because you get distracted by these thoughts, you can't be still enough to direct wherever the mind goes, wherever you want the mind to go. This brings me to three different levels that you have to understand. You cannot control the mind if you're at the level of the mind. If you start to get entangled in the mind and whatever thoughts there are, and you start to resist them, you'll never be able to control the mind. In order to control the mind, you must rise beyond and above the mind. Okay, so let's talk about the three different levels. The lowest level of all, let's call this level one, is the body. And this is when we're reduced to our animal instincts. Okay, so what I mean by that is someone who's very identified with their body is going to follow their feelings. Oh, I'm craving some dessert right now. Go have dessert. Oh, I'm craving sex right now. Go have sex. I'm craving something. You follow your cravings and your base survival instincts. When you rise above the level of the body, you're now, you can now exercise discernment at the level of the mind. You can almost be like, okay, well, the body feels this. I can see the body, but hold on. Doing this won't bring a good consequence into my life. Okay, so robbing a bank, the body wants to go and get that money and steal that money. But hold on, if I take that money, the mind is now discerning what the right and the wrong thing to do is. There will be bad longer term consequences, bad future consequences that might not help me. It's not worth the risk. In assessing risk versus reward, the mind can get involved in that. But when you're at that level, what can't happen is you can't rise above the mind. Whatever thought there is, you get entangled in it. Okay, so that's why sometimes, you know, a lot of intelligent people suffer their own minds because they get so caught up in analytically thinking about things. They don't know how to direct their minds or take on a new form and open themselves up to a new opportunity because they're not used to thinking that way. And I've seen this with so many business owners. They get so hyper analytical. They need everything to be perfect before they take the first step and figure things out. And this is why a lot of people procrastinate as well. A lot of intellectual people procrastinate as well, right? because they want everything to be perfect before they take that first step. But what they don't understand is that once you take the step, you get clearer and clearer. Once you fail, you learn what it takes to succeed. So at this level, what we fail to do is gain control and mastery over our minds in accordance with what we want in our lives. Okay. If you want to have something in your life, you must be that person first. This is exactly what we discussed in the channel. So what is the level above the mind? That is awareness. Awareness. So what do I mean by awareness? Going back to that point of the moving pictures and moving images, there is something that is aware of the thought and the mind. So ask yourself this, what is it that's watching? Because there's something that's watching the mind and its contents. There is something even that's watching the body and its feelings, right? So all of these feelings come and go, all of the thoughts come and go, but in the background, there is something there is watching all of that. 
But the problem is right now that that thing is in the background. If we can bring that thing into the foreground, awareness, and bring all of these things to the background, then we no longer get distracted by all of these shiny objects. So if we go back to the moving pictures, your thoughts are moving pictures, your feelings are moving pictures, and you get distracted by them. But what's not a moving picture? What's stiller and calmer than the feelings of the body? The thoughts. What's stiller and calmer than the thoughts? Awareness. So if you look at awareness, awareness is such that it doesn't change. We can't get, you know, it, it's like, it's very hard to stay as awareness because we constantly get distracted. We constantly get bombarded by thoughts and our feelings. And our sense, we're so identified with the sense perceptions, whatever we feel, whatever we, you know, think, whatever we see, we get distracted by these moving pictures. And that's why it's so difficult to stay as awareness. And in one of the previous videos, I'm going to put the link to it up here. I've put a drill on how you can, you know, inquire and get to the root of awareness. You become awareness simply when you can begin to observe all of the thoughts that pass, when all of the feelings that pass. So right now, if you take a mental inventory of what's going on without having any judgment or feeling or attitude about your thoughts, just simply neutrally observe them and allow them to be. Whatever thoughts naturally arising, you let those be. That is you watching as awareness, right? That's your core fundamental state. But we lose sight of that because we start to get involved in the mind and its thoughts or in the body and its feelings. So the question becomes, how do you stay as awareness? So this was an interesting revelation that I had recently. And uh, one of the philosophies that allow you to do this is it's called apophatic apophatic theology or apophatic something. I'm going to spell it here. A-P-O-P-H-A-T-I-C. I'll encourage you to look that up. But what this means, apophysis, apophatic, whatever, however you pronounce it, what this essentially means is, is to arrive at the knowledge of God through negation. The only way we can arrive at awareness is through negation of body and negation of mind. Meaning, through disidentifying with body and disidentifying with mind. To rise to the level of awareness and operate as awareness, you must reject the feeling and simply watch them and observe them. Reject thought, simply watch them and observe them. When we observe and watch, we're no longer it. Have you noticed that? If you can look at your thoughts and your feelings. You're no longer your thoughts and your feelings. If you can look at this character and not say, this is me, or say, this is, you know, I am this, and reduce yourself to some little like character and some body and some, you know, some material, then you're no longer it. If you can watch something and observe something, you're no longer it. That is why observation is the crux of awareness, of abiding as awareness. Okay, so level one is body, level two is mind, and the highest level of all is awareness. I hope you can see that. Apophatic philosophy literally means negation, arriving at something through negation. We can arrive at stillness when we start to observe and watch the illusions that pass, right? And it's difficult to do this when we're identified with our sense perceptions. So when we start to watch and observe our sense perceptions, we start to arrive at awareness. So now let's talk about a drill that'll allow you to do this. And the drill is quite simply, instead of reacting and being quick to respond, where should I put this? From now on, whatever naturally arises, let it arise and let it be, okay? Let feelings and thought arise in acceptance. So it begins with acceptance. It begins with completely accepting what is naturally arising. Because what happens is because we're so identified with something, it's difficult to do that. 
because we expect good thoughts to be there. And then we quickly get scared when bad thoughts are there. Like, oh my God, why did I have this thought? We think our thoughts are personal. We own our thoughts. It's mine. I am this individual entity that's separate from everything else, right? So the first step is let whatever feelings and thoughts arise, arise. By the way, this drill is to help you get more and more into that level of awareness and disidentify with the content of mind. And then simply watch, simply watch. It's kind of like you being in the movie theater, watching a movie, but then realizing, wait a second, this is a movie. Sometimes the movie scenes can get so emotionally spiking that you get lost in it, right? So imagine watching a horror movie. You get so into it and you get so scared by it and you start to, because you begin, it's re- you, you, you believe that it's real. When you start to believe something is real, then you get lost in it. We start to believe our thoughts are real. We start to believe our feelings are real. That's why we identify with them. When you simply watch the movie and you realize, wait a second, I'm watching a movie. Wait a second, I'm watching thought. This is not me. Simply watch and disidentify. What this means is we're no longer taking ownership and taking whatever thought or whatever feeling that comes up. We don't take it personally anymore. When you can disidentify from mind and body, you can give commands. Now you can choose to identify in the way that you'd like. And in this manner, you control your mind. This is how you can exercise your willpower and direct yourself in the way that you want. When you can do these two steps, now you can insert something in there in a fresh plate, your own programming in there in a fresh plate. And in this way, you'll become a master of your reality. It's quite simple. So with that, I conclude this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Let's do a quick recap of what we talked about today. Today, we talked about controlling the mind, but in particular, why most people fail to control the mind. And most people fail because they begin with controlling the mind. And they take that word control too directly. But in order to control the mind, we can't stoop to the level of mind. We have to rise above the level of mind, right? And to rise above the level of mind, we must enter the level of awareness and operate as who we truly are. And in order to do that, we must disidentify from body and from mind, from feeling and thought. To disidentify from body and mind, we must begin to accept whatever arises without fighting or rejecting it. Because the moment we insert a reaction of, okay, this is good and this is bad, and we label something, we get identified. Please think about this. If you're labeling something as good, that means you identify with that, with that good quality, and you only want to see that. If you label something as bad, that means you identify as good, and that is bad. I am this, that is bad. That is not me, so that is bad. That's essentially what you're saying. But if you just neutrally observe everything that happens, nothing is good, nothing is bad, Everything just is. Now your awareness. Now you simply watch as the observer. You're no longer the active participant. So we have to learn when to switch between active participant and observer and still participate being an observer, getting fully involved without getting entangled. That is the sweet spot that everyone should uh, strive to reach if you really want to master your life. Okay. So the drill I gave you was to let whatever feelings and thoughts, whatever's arising naturally, let them arise, accept them, embrace them. They're not you. Because if we begin with rejecting them, then again, identification happens. Step two, now simply watch them and disidentify from them. Simply watch as they change state. Simply watch as the play and the illusion happens, as the thought changes form. One day it's this thought, next day it's another thought. It doesn't matter to you because you're simply watching. With that, I conclude this video. Thank you so much for watching. I sincerely hope this was helpful. Please leave me a comment letting me know what you thought of this. If this video was helpful, if there's a suggestion you had on a future video that you'd like to watch. I just recently had this epiphany and I felt compared to share this, uh, compelled to share this 
So please let me know what you thought of this. If you're new to the channel, by the way, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that little bell there so you're not notified of any new video that I put up. And also I'm super excited to announce if you'd like to work closer together with me and my team in our flagship Reality Mastery program, you can now apply to join us. So go on the description below and click the link. You'll fill up a short survey uh, to see if you qualify and then uh, we'll schedule a call with you to see if you're a good fit. Now who we typically work with are people who are entrepreneurs and business owners who want to take their businesses to the next level but they realize they don't really have a direct business problem. It appears that they have a business problem but this business problem is stemming from something deeper, from probably a lack of awareness of where they are, what they would want and a lack of clarity about their lives. Okay, if that sounds like you, click on the link to sign up. Let's see if we can help out. And also a free Facebook group is open for you to take advantage of. The link for that is also in the description. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Peace.